You could have been anywhere in the YouTube world, but you're here with me, and I appreciate that. Welcome back to House J Views. And you already know, man, we're going to talk about this Survivor Series pay-per-view. We're going to run down this card. We're going to talk about what went down, who won what. So let's talk about Survivor Series 2021. So for a card that had little to no build, the night was pretty solid. It started off with becky lynch versus charlotte flair which is a shock to me it was safe to assume that this match was going to end the night but it actually began the night it actually started the night off they had a real solid match they gave them 30 minutes they brawled for a very long time going into the match both were heels but judging by crowd engagement becky was like the the defined baby face in the match like the crowd started to cheer for her at certain points in the match and as good as the match was the match was actually filled with a couple of botches it was a couple of times where they would miss their moves a couple of times where charlotte missed her moves like the back elbow and when she did the moonsault into the outside a couple of times they were like oh she didn't get all of it you know commentary trying to you know cover up on the missing of her moves but the match was pretty solid it was pretty good the match came down to its end when Charlotte rolled up Becky, attempting to, you know, get a little dirty pin, get a little cheat off to win the match. Charlotte grabbed the rope. The ref peeped it. He counted the one, two, peeped it at before he counted to three. He said, hey, yo, get your hand off the rope. But what's funny as hell is that right after that, Becky Lynch rolled up Charlotte and she got the one, two, three, even though her hands was on the rope. The ref didn't see it. <laughs> it was odd. But hey, man, Becky Lynch got the one, two, three, got the quick pin. Charlotte completely no sold the dirty pin, got up immediately, started laughing it off. I don't know, like the, 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 it's like they wanted to get this match out the way, I guess. That's what made them go first. There's still a lot of speculation on the backstage heat with Charlotte, so I don't know what's going on with that and how it's going to play out going towards the next pay-per-view, which, interesting enough, the next pay-per-view isn't until this event called Day One, which is going down on New Year's Day. So I guess we're not going to get a pay-per-view in December, so... I think it's interesting that WWE is going to have all this time to build up towards the next pay-per-view. Until then, it's going to be a while until we get our next pay-per-view. So I want to see what they do with this rivalry going forward. Probably not going to touch it since they're on different brands. But we'll see going forward. Becky Lynch, she took the win for this match. The next match we get is the men's Survivor Series match. Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. On Team Raw, you have Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, and Austin Theory. Over on Team SmackDown, you have Drew McIntyre, Jeff Hardy, Sheamus, King, Xavier Woods, and Happy Corbin. It was a pretty solid Survivor Series elimination match, five on five, you know how it goes. The first elimination went down when Kevin Owens walked out on Team Raw, getting himself counted out, and he's like, you know what? Yeah, man, I'm a team player. I don't, you, you guys, I told you I was going to be the bad guy. Whatever. He, he walks out on Team Raw. He's the first elimination. Next, Baron Corbin was eliminated by Finn Balor after Finn Balor hit him with the coup de grace. Get him out of here. I, you know how I feel about um, Happy Corbin. Get, get Corbin out of here. Pack him up. Pack him up. After that, Xavier Woods would get eliminated by Bobby Lashley after Lashley would hit King Woods with the spear and then follow it up with the hurt lock to make King Woods tap out. The next elimination would go down, unfortunately, when Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre got into their little back and forth. They have a story rivalry of the year earlier in the year going against each other for the WWE Championship, WrestleMania, Hell in a Cell. They have been through it this year. So they fight on the outside of the ring and they both ended up getting counted out. I hate count out elimination i know that they want to make both guys look strong but i feel like it's a cheap way to get them both out of there without either one of them getting pinned you know what i mean like they didn't want either one of them to get pinned so they counted both of them out whatever drew and bobby lashley double count out that's how they ended up getting eliminated next finn balor would get eliminated after sheamus would bro kick finn's head off Austin Theory will actually end up eliminating Sheamus after that by roll up and Austin Theory's elimination will come once Jeff Hardy hit him with the swan time bomb. So then it comes down to Jeff Hardy representing SmackDown and Seth Rollins representing Raw. Seth Rollins would end the match by hitting Jeff Hardy with the curve stomp. One, two, three. Seth Rollins is the sole survivor and Team Raw 
takes the win for the men's Survivor Series match. I feel like this is good for Seth. It makes Seth look real strong going into his WWE Championship match with Big E. He is still the number one contender for the WWE Championship. We have yet to have the match between Seth Rollins and Big E. I don't know if they're going to do it within the next couple weeks or if they're going to hold this match off until the day one pay-per-view event, which is going down on January 1st of 2022. The next match we have is this commemorative battle royal that they're doing for The Rock. This Survivor Series event marks the 25 year anniversary since The Rock's debut. I felt like this was a weird concept to make. They gave a lot of shout outs to The Rock from this battle royal to his new movie that he has on Netflix called Red Notice. They have been promoting the movie throughout the night with the segment that Vince McMahon had with the golden egg to this battle royal being based on 25 years of the rock. So a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people probably thought that the rock was gonna make an appearance during this event some way, somehow, even via satellite, maybe drop through, cut a promo, but nah, man, the rock didn't show up throughout the night at all. So I felt like it was weird that they had this 25 man battle royal, but hey, look, at least it gave a lot of people something to do. The winner of this match would end up being Omos. We had a couple eliminations throughout the battle royal, nothing too crazy. You know, not a lot of crazy spots. It wasn't the most entertaining battle royal. So prior to the match, um, the event itself is also sponsored by Pizza Hut. So the Street Profits came out with a bunch of pizzas and they started to promote the Pizza Hut sponsorship that they have with WWE. But at the end of the Battle Royal, when Omas won the Battle Royal, he started pointing to the boxes of pizzas on the outside of the ring like it was the fucking WrestleMania sign. It was weird. <laughs> I don't think Omos career or anyone's career for that matter was going to benefit from this battle royal, but whatever, Omos takes it and on to the next match. <laughs> next we get a tag team match between the respective tag team champions. We get the Raw Tag Team Champions, Team RK Bro, which is Randy Orton and Matt Riddle, going up against the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, The Usos. Now this match was awesome, two of the top tag teams in WWE going at it. A couple of good spots about the match. I thought that the Usos were going to win this match when they hit Matt Riddle with the double super kick. They hit him with the double team on each side of the head. Thought that was going to be the end of that, but he actually ends up kicking out of that. I kind of felt like Randy Orton was going to get the finish to this. This was a milestone pay-per-view for Randy Orton. This was his 177th straight pay-per-view. He has the top record now for most pay-per-view appearances. He takes the win for this match when he hits one of the Usos with the RKO. When one of them tried to hit Matt Riddle with the Uso Splash. I'm sorry, I forget if it was either Jimmy or Jay who tried to hit Matt with the Uso Splash. But Randy Orton, from out of nowhere, RKO, real clean, real pristine. One, two, three. The Raw Tag Team Champions, Matt Riddle and Randy Orton they take this one so so far if you're counting tallies raw has won every match so far of the night the raw women's champion becky lynch won her match the raw team for the survivor series men's side won their match omas won that battle royal if it meant anything and team rk bro they won their tag match and this match was no different we get the women's survivor series match next with team raw and team smackdown going up against each other now the crowd turned on this match on and off it was kind of weird and it sucks because all the women involved you know they put a lot into this match you could tell that they tried their best but i, I don't know if the crowd was burnt out or they just were turned off by the way the match was booked but they booed this match through the majority of it. Besides one point in a match when it was Bianca and Sasha one-on-one, -on -one, we had a little moment where the crowd was chanting for both of them. But besides that, the crowd booed this match for the majority of the match. They did like the type of eliminations where a lot of members of Team Raw got eliminated in weird ways. And then it came down to Bianca Belair going up against the majority of the members of Team SmackDown. And she would end up becoming the sole survivor and winning a match for the Raw Women's team when she hit Shotzi with the KOD. One, two, three. And I don't know, man. Like I said, the crowd just turned on this match. I don't know if it was because of the way it was booked or they were burnt. But yeah, they booed. They booed for the majority of this match. 
but at least it made Bianca look a little strong. Then we get the main event of the night, WWE Champion Big E going up against the Universal Champion Roman Reigns. Hard hitting main event, two of the top dogs of their respective brands going up against each other, going at it. Big E at a lot of points in this match, I thought he would have took it. A crazy spot in the match for me is when Big E speared Roman Reigns to the outside of the ring. But when Big E slid back into the ring, Roman walked back in there and speared Big E. I thought that spot was crazy. I thought that that was enough to at least slow Roman down. But nah, man, Roman is a cannon. They are booking him to be super strong. The match will come down to its end when Big E would attempt to hit the big ending on Roman Reigns. But Roman would stomp on the back of Big E's leg to mobilize him to, you know, to startle him a little bit. And then Roman would run towards the ropes, hit him with the spear, one, two, three, and the Universal Champion Roman Reigns defeats the WWE Champion Big E. Now, now that this side story is all over, Big E could go back to Raw and go through his respective rivalries that he has going on with Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. And over on SmackDown, I'm pretty sure they're about to set up a rematch between Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar because apparently earlier in the night they had mentioned that Brock Lesnar's suspension has been lifted. So maybe he's going to show up on SmackDown soon, especially when he was fined a million. But we'll see what WWE does when it comes to this build towards this day one pay-per-view that we're getting January 1st, 2022. So that was pretty much my review of Survivor Series 2021. Thank you so much for coming through to the channel. If you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, turn the notifications on, engage. I'll highlight y'all. Peace.